Today we're going to go over how I scan and process images. Since all of my illustrations are made by hand with traditional media, uh, I have to transfer them to the computer and get them ready for whatever their next step is, whether it's going into a magazine layout or in packaging or if I'm just going to be making prints out of it. The reason I wanted to do this video is because I actually lost a few files about a month ago um, just in a move from one form of file storage to another and I lost I think like my 10 most recent files and it's fine it's not that big of a deal but it is still pretty annoying because now I have to re-scan and reprocess all of those images so since that's kind of tedious and I've been dreading doing it I thought I would just go ahead and make a video about it and show you guys how I scan and process images so uh, without further ado let's get started to start off, I power on my scanner, which is an Epson Perfection V370, and I connect it to my laptop and start up the scanning software. I'm going to be scanning 10 illustrations in total, so I won't go into detail on all of them, but this strawberry ombre piece is one that I thought would make a great example, so I'll start with that. To begin with, I open up the scanner, lay the illustration face down in the glass, make sure it's flat and straight against the edges, and then close the lid. Then I initiate a preview scan, which gives a quick idea of how the illustration is scanning in with the current settings. So I take a look and make sure the illustration is square with the plate edges and that there are no big curves in the paper and that it's properly exposed and looks just as it does in real life. Depending on the type of scanner you're using and the type of work you're scanning in, the settings and options may be different. When I first got this scanner, I had to spend a few hours trying out different settings to see what worked best with my pieces. Currently, I'm in professional mode and I've got the document type set to reflective, auto exposure is on, and I'm scanning at 720 dpi. Everything looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and hit scan. When I do that, a dialog box will pop up prompting me to choose what type of file I want and where I want it stored. I'm going to choose JPEG and send it to my desktop. Then I confirm, and now I've got a few minutes to kill while it's scanning in. When it's all done, a window will pop up confirming that the piece is done. Here's what it looks like directly from the scanner. For processing, I'll take the JPEG and drop it directly into Pixelmator, which is a program that does some of the same things that Photoshop does, but it's much lighter weight, easier to use, and it's a one-off purchase rather than a monthly licensing thing with Creative Cloud. And since 95% of my process is traditional and by hand, I really don't need all the bells and whistles. The main thing I do to all of my images once they're scanned in is to remove the background noise that's come from the texture of the paper. The reason I do this is because most of my commercial clients want final illustrations delivered this way, as they'll be used in magazine layouts, print materials, or packaging. So having the background removed makes it a lot easier to work with. And even if I'm just going to be making prints from them, removing the background makes it much easier to make a print from an illustration and it uses less ink. So to do this, to remove the background, I first grab the magic wand tool from the tools palette and select the background. In Pixelmator, as you drag the wand tool, it increases the area of the selection. Ideally, the wand would select all of the white area and leave the strawberries perfectly untouched, but since they have some delicate details and soft edges, I know that I'll have to just do a partial selection and then refine it. After I have my selection, I choose Refine Selection from the drop-down menu, and then Smooth Selection. Smoothing a selection can be tricky because you don't want to smooth too much or you can lose some of the edges and fine details. So it helps to zoom in and check your selection. Once I'm satisfied with the selection, I hit Delete and the background is gone. Then I add in a basic white background in a new layer. Since these berries have a lot of details and small leaves, I've ended up with some remnants of the background which have to be cleaned up by hand. This is normal and I expected as much with this piece. To clean up these little bits, I choose the eraser from the tools palette and get to work. I like to keep a bit of softness in the eraser since I feel like it keeps the edges looking more natural, more like the way they did in the original illustration. Most pieces don't require too much erasing, but this one needs quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. 
and here it is all done. With illustrations and paintings that are larger than a 9x12, I have to scan them in in multiple pieces and then weave the pieces together afterwards using Pixelmator. I wasn't scanning any big pieces today, so I'm going to go ahead and treat this 9x12 as I would if it were an 11x14. The most important thing to remember when you're scanning the same piece in in stages is to make sure that all of the scans are perfectly aligned and at the same angle. To do this, I use the edge of the scanner bed as a guide, placing the illustration directly against it to make sure that it's at a 90 degree angle. Then I flip it around for the second scan, again making sure to align the piece with the edge of the scanner bed. After scanning, I'll end up with two JPEGs which I drop into Pixelmator, where I resize them and roughly align both layers. Then I like to zoom in and reduce the opacity of the top layer so that I can double check the alignment and make sure it's perfect. With a piece like this, it's actually pretty easy to align it since the seam will be just between two elements of the composition, but this step is crucial if you have a seam running right down the middle of your subject. Once I'm happy with the alignment, I once again grab the eraser from the tools palette and erase the edge of the top layer and merge both layers down. Then I repeat the same process I did with the strawberries to remove all the background noise. With this piece, that step is actually really simple and fast since most of the edges are sharper and there are fewer tiny details. And here it is, all done. So that's it. That's how I scan and process my illustrations. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.